nice to see the sunny weather here and of course everyone knows that weather is a provincial responsibility so we called in a few chips. It's a pleasure to be here with uh, my colleague and friend uh, Minister Calandra and as well as the Associate Minister of Housing Rob Flack. You know it's no secret that Ontario is growing rapidly and as we've heard the Premier say if we continue to grow at this pace we could see our population grow by almost 5 million people over the next 10 years. Comme nous uh, l'avons entendu de la bouche du Premier ministre Ford, si nous maintenons le rythme de croissance actuel, nous pourrions voir notre population augmenter de vers uh, environ 5 millions d'habitants au cours des 10 uh, prochaines années. People want to come to Ontario. They want to go to school here, start their career here and raise their family here. In fact, my parents uh, are World War II uh, refugees from Hungary and they met here in Toronto. They got married in 1955 and they'll be celebrating their 68th wedding anniversary this December. And what a great country to come to. They came with nothing and Canada gave them ever, everything. So that's why we're doing what we're doing and never before has Ontario faced a housing crisis like this. And it's going to take all levels of government to address this challenge. Since the fall of 2022, our government has called on the federal government many times to remove the HST on purpose-built rental housing, including in this year's budget and most recently at the Association of Municipalities of Ontario conference. And in September, the federal government listened to our long-standing calls and finally removed the GST from qualifying purpose-built rental housing. Today I'm pleased to announce that we are following through on our promise to remove the full provincial portion of the HST. Now that's 8% on qualifying new purpose-built rental housing. Together with the federal government's actions, this would remove the full 13% HST on new purpose-built rental construction in Ontario. In real terms, this means a two-bedroom rental unit valued at $500,000 would receive $40,000 in provincial tax relief from this rebate. And combined with the federal rebate, that's $65,000 in tax relief, a clear incentive to encourage rental housing construction. This provincial rebate would apply to qualifying projects that began construction between September 14, 2023 and December 31st, 2030. So long as construction is completed by December 31st, 2035, and we met some of the workers here, do you think we're gonna get this finished by 2035? I'm seeing a few, yes, sir. All right, we're gonna get it done. By taking steps like this to address the housing crisis, we're ensuring Ontario is the best place to live, work, and raise a family. Now tomorrow, I will provide the people of Ontario with an update on our plan for building a strong Ontario through the release of the 2023 Fall Economic Statement. Demain, je ferai le point avec les Ontariens et les Ontariens sur notre plan pour bâtir un Ontario fort en publiant l'exposé économique de l'automne 2023. This update will continue with our government's targeted, responsible approach so we have the flexibility needed to get through this economic uncertainty while laying a strong foundation for future generations, which is so critical. Now, folks, this is a challenging time, but we should all be confident in Ontario's economy, its workers, and its people. Thank you very much for your time, and now I'll pass it over to my colleague, Minister Paul Calandra. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, uh, Minister Bethan Falvey. Uh, listen, today's announcement uh, really is a game changer. It is a major step forward in making it cheaper and easier to build rental housing in Ontario. So by removing uh, the provincial portion of the HSD from qualifying purpose-built rentals, thousands of homes that would otherwise not have been built have now become economically viable and can move forward in the coming years. I appreciate uh, Minister Bethan Falvey's advocacy pushing our federal partners over the past year to get this done, and it was a very difficult, challenging task, that's for sure. But we know that there's more to do. So Ontario's housing supply crisis is serious, and it demands a serious response, and our government is committed 
to delivering on that. That's why later this year, this, uh, this month, Ontario will be hosting our first ever provincial housing forum. The forum will be an opportunity for municipalities and partners in the nonprofit and home building sectors to provide their input as we prepare our next housing supply action plan that will re be released early next year. Now with this plan, we are looking seriously at how we can implement, implement the remaining recommendations of the Housing Affordability Task Force and get more shovels in the ground. We're also in the process of launching a modular housing framework under the leadership of Minister uh, Flack that will help address Ontario's housing needs and make our province a leader in innovation in innovative home construction. Now, as part of this framework, we intend to use a ready-to-go request for qualification process to identify and pre-qualify companies interested in modular housing construction. This approach will help us pick qualified builders faster and more easily and get more homes built at a price that ordinary families can afford. We're also working to uh, leverage surplus provincial lands and partnering with municipalities to leverage surplus municipal lands in order to help reduce the cost of building attainable homes, including modular homes. So in other words, we are taking an all hands on deck approach to getting more homes built across Ontario. And today's announcement is a significant step forward in this plan, but it is far from being the last. We're going to work closely with municipalities and all our partners, including the federal government, to make sure the right policies are in place to hit our goal of 1.5 million homes by 2031 and to build the homes that people of Ontario need and deserve. And as Minister Beth and Falvey said, and I'm just going to encourage them over, all the guys over there that are working, come over here because people need to see, come in the shot if you would, all the hard hats, get over here because you guys are building the next generations of home for people. And if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be doing any of this stuff. So thank you very much. And thank you all for being here. And I just want to give you guys a big round of applause for what you're doing. So. And with that, I guess we can take questions. Great, thank you. We'll now go to the media for questions. Please state your name and outlet and one question, one follow-up. Hi, it's for uh, Minister Calandra, Brian Weatherhead from CTV News. Uh, Minister, what role did the um, thousands of documents released um, earlier this, uh, this week uh, have in your decision to uh, change or not change the boundaries on the, uh, the green belt? Yeah, no, look, it, uh, it played no role whatsoever. As I said uh, uh, early on, uh, I thought there was a, a little bit too much involvement uh, on the political side with respect uh, to the official plans, and that is why uh, the, uh, the decision was made uh, to uh, revoke the provincial changes to the official plans. And what role did the, the Premier's office play in, uh, in any of this? Yeah, as I said, when, once I briefed the Premier, uh, he uh, ordered me to make the changes uh, to the official plans, and I moved quickly to do so. Great. Thank you. There are no more questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.